Hi, this is Dr. Jerry Hesh at Hesh Institute, and um, John certainly is one of the most complex clients I've had uh, in a very long time. Starting with his feet, uh, he does have a little bit of pronation, and so these orthotics are helpful to him, and they give him some nice arch support, a soft arch support, and they certainly give a little extra padding um, for shock absorption. But what we did was we added, we did an experiment and we had him try walking by flipping the wedges. Mm -hmm. uh, the per foot person he saw actually put the, the height of the rear foot wedge on the outside. Correct. And so I flipped it and put the two millimeter wedge on, on the inside of the heel. And you experimented and you found out that on the right side, you feel like a four millimeters more helpful. Correct. Okay. So that's where we started with treating you. And what was the benefit of that? Um, well, I, during my walk yesterday, after the homework was to find which, uh, which level was best. Um, I, I ended up with a four on the right and a six on the right and four on the left, um, because I'm a little bit more exaggerated on the right side. Um, while I was walking, I noticed for the first time more freedom and mobility. Just, I don't know if you would call it like, I, I can't describe it, but around here, I had a lot more freedom and mobility that I didn't know I didn't have. Okay. Until, okay. until I started walking. And Interesting. And the orthotics have always helped you like instantaneously. They did. They did. Which is really remarkable because I wouldn't have predicted that. Mm. That's an, a unique response to orthotics. Really? Yeah. And I need to add that most orthotics have a two millimeter buildup mm. um, on them already. Our, our numbers didn't jive, but we talked about that earlier. Right. Okay. All righty. So good. So we found a helpful medial elevation of the rear foot, mm -hmm. which does enhance raising the arch a little bit naturally. Good. Yeah. Well, I think those will serve you well. It's a little hard to find a four millimeter wedge. Sometimes you can find a two um, and you can stack two of those, you know, mm -hmm. do an experiment. Okay. Um, anyway, I'm glad that we figured that out. You had really tight ankle joints. They didn't, the feet didn't um, lift up into what's called dorsiflexion past zero degrees. And that would make reduced shock absorption when you walk. Does that sound correct? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I mobilize the tail posteriorly in posterior glide and in rotation, and we achieve 10 degree gain on both sides. What would, what did that accomplish? Uh, it, I, it felt great. <laughs> <That's> okay. <one> <laughs> well, well, you kind of noticed that you had more mobility, more, more, Yes. Mobility in the foot and ankle. In in pointing my toes is where I actually Downward. felt it. Which is interesting. Yeah, that's that's where I felt freer. Um, okay. And, and laying in bed last the night before last, like it was just fun to be like, I can go that far or not yep. here, but I can go here. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And that should stay, you know, it's good for you to stretch your heel cords. You know the two positions yes. of stretching them. Sure. I would stretch them for five minutes a day for about a week, and I think you'll be fine. After that, probably do it once a week. But be really gentle in the stretch. Okay. Very gentle. Because you want to get a little bit release of the very first restriction that you encounter. You don't want to like blast past it. That's so real <laughs> gentle stretching. Very un-American stretching. Yes. Okay, good. All you right. Five minutes? Yeah, five minutes is a good duration. Nice okay. Yeah, yeah. Anything over two minutes is really good. Okay. It seems like it takes that long to kind of readjust the nervous system. Okay. okay. The other thing that was quite surprising, and I think related to an old injury when you struck the, the hip, mm -hmm. how did that happen? Uh, it was a very, very cold day as uh, I went down a water slide I was at lifeguarding practice or lifeguard classes. After the class, we went down the water slide once. It was frigid cold and I jammed my leg on the bottom of the pool deck. Okay. And I, I don't remember if my leg was locked, but it jammed my right side. Okay. And for about a week, I noticed, I was 15 at the time, so I, I can't remember it very well, but I know that I, I remember knowing that that was not good. 
but I never did anything about it. I just yeah. kind of was young and just kind of pushed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what really amazes me is that nobody apparently checked your hip rotation, but they were treating you for back pain. And there's an old saying, you know, check the joint above and check the joint below. Mm. Um, come lie on your back and I'll show what I found. I like to hip rot I'd like to evaluate rotation different than the tradition, and we need research on this to validate it. Um, your left hip had 30 degrees, give or take, of internal rotation when the hip and, and knee are in neutral. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when I take it up to the end range, I can still bounce it. There's still a freedom in the joint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every joint should have that little bit of spring and recoil at end range. This one, I could only rotate, you know, to zero. Mm. Okay, so I treated that for five minutes. We put a piece of foam under the choke canner and all the hip rotators for, for five minutes. And now it goes into 30 degrees or so, and it has a, that normal kind of soft end feel. It'll spring forward and it'll bounce back. Mm. And what did that accomplish for you? Uh, trying to put all of it together. It might be hard to isolate that. That was the first day we did the ankles. That was the very first day. And then we did the hips. And, and, the, and, sitting, the, and, the, and the sitting thing, which changed me right, how, right, how well sitting, I felt standing. Taller, yeah. yeah. And, and I did a scoop on the ankle, and then I mobilized talus and glide and did rotation like that. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's hard for you to know. It made some, seemed to make some cumulative benefit. It might have been what made that freeness that I felt in the walking. That might have that been the benefit be. of this. I don't and I think so. I think it did contribute to that because that would have increased right rotation of the pelvis as you walk, especially as you bring your, your, your left foot forward, the pelvis rotates to the right. And you had reduced right pelvic rotation. Mm. So I think that did feed into that. Okay. That makes sense. All righty. Um, and let me look at my list and see what else we found. So lie on your stomach. We found two rib joints. Shirt off? No, you're fine. Okay. That had reduced mobility. And that was rib number nine around here. When I tried to spring towards the spine, it didn't have mobility. But now I can load it and I can spring it. And the same was true for a rib between your shoulder blades, which I thought was number five. And that didn't spring either. And then once we restored that mobility, tell me how you responded to that. I felt like I could twist again. Um, but I didn't notice I didn't notice that I couldn't twist right. before. <laughs> right. So when I all of a sudden could, uh -huh. it felt like I I was not just twisting from here. Yep. I felt like I was twisting from here and up. Nice, um, nice. Which was different. And you know, it doesn't matter how strong you are. When you have, you can sit up. Okay. When you have restricted mobility in a joint, you're going to turn around. Uh, when you have restricted mobility in a joint, then in the ligaments on one side of the joint are tighter. Same thing for the tendons and even parts of the joint capsule. And that's actually more of a three three um, dimensional phenomenon. Okay, but anyway, that excessive tension causes inhibition of the muscles that have a shared neurology. And so you could strengthen and strengthen and strengthen, but those muscles are inhibited and you can't reverse the inhibition. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sorry we didn't measure that strength. It would have been nice to get that on film, but mm -hmm. I just didn't think about it, you know. But I have lots and lots of that on YouTube. Um, it's not commonly appreciated. I have no idea why it's not the case, okay? Okay. Um, and some of these restrictions take a very specific technique, and they take a very prolonged uh, force application to fully correct them. You've had your ribs adjusted prior. In the past, you've had your ribs adjusted. No, Never. how about your upper back? I did. I did. Manip I did mobilize your upper back also. Yeah, I've had some chiropractors and 
popping and cracks and adjustments and stuff to the upper, yes. But never had the ribs treated. Never. Okay, anyway, all right. Never. So I've heard of ribs being adjusted, you know, with that quick thrust. Mm. Um, but I chose to treat them over the course of three minutes because I want to make it not an adjustment. It'll need to be repeated, but I want to make it a correction that's corrected once and done. Okay? Mm. And I think that when we restored that mobility in those two ribs, I then did a manipulation yeah, we got lots of to these of thoracic segments. Okay, we don't call it a, 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 an adjustment. That's kind of chiropractic language. We call it an articulation. Mm -hmm. And we're licensed to do that as well. Um, not many PTs do that. But I did, you know, articulate two segments. And my opinion is that they will stay mobile because the rib mobility is now restored. So we treat it as a system. We treat the whole body. Okay? Now, for the most significant finding in your body is that of mobility of the sacrum. And we name this a sacral torsion. And the naming might be wrong, and maybe someday we'll have a better nomenclature. Um, it acts as though the sacrum rotates in the pelvis and side bends and becomes restricted. And I have lots of explanations on why that might not be what happens inside the SI joint as the primary driver, um, but that's not relevant right now, okay? The point is that when I find someone with this pattern in which it looks like sacrum rotated left, side bent left, the most prominent part will be the left lower quadrant if we divide it into four quadrants, okay? And it'll be lower here. I looked at you and I had you bend forward and it was fine. So I didn't think you had it, but you had this innate sense that you're not weight bearing equally in this part of your anatomy. Okay, and you talked about when you brush your teeth, all of a sudden you realize your right foot is pointed outward by 10 inches. Mm -hmm. Okay, I um, mean, you consciously tried to overcome that, but it's an unconscious thing, right? You haven't been able to change that behavior. Sure. It's driven by a reason, and it has to do with the interoception, uh, your, your body's proprioception, your sense of position, and your sense of movement as well. It knew Your body knew something was just not quite balanced and that was a way of trying to seek balance. Um, you were always on Wayne this, this part of your, you're always leaning to the left more so than the right. God, Correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. What was really interesting was that I had you bend forward, just bend forward, keep going, stop right there. And there was no torsion. I could easily spring here uh, all four quadrants and I could easily spring, you know, vertically even with my thumb and I could get force translation with a small amount of force. But when you flexed all the way, so go ahead and bend forward all the way, right there is where this torsion manifested. Highly unusual, but you had blocked motion here, whereas on the right side it was easy to spring through the SI into the rest of the body, into the hip, into the lumbar spine. But it was blocked here. You felt it, I felt it. Same thing with springing vertically under the ILA. It was blocked on the left. And so the way I treated it was I had you lay on your back. I put a firm dowel under this, the left sacral quadrant and I had you hug, hug, hug your knees just enough to maximize pressure on that dowel. And you did that for three minutes and that restored the movement. And this is a pipe foam uh, with a wood dowel inside of it, a half inch dowel. And then we dip it in this rubber dip, which strangely is called Plasta Dip. Uh, we do it three times and stand there like a monkey waiting and waiting for it to stop dripping, you know. Uh, but it makes it, it'll last, a, you know, a very long time, you know, and it, uh, yeah, before the foam breaks down. Mm -hmm. All right, so it was placed right there. You laid on your back, you hugged your knees. Knees were, you know, thighs were bent maybe 100 degrees or so. And it worked. Mm -hmm. Tell us what happened after we restored that movement. Uh, I felt, I'm trying to remember my exact words, I was kind of 
it was a big moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I, I remember st over here bending over to pick up my shoes, and yes. I, I felt like I wasn't stuck in a rounded, scooped forward position. Yep. I, I sat down, and picked up my shoes, and I said, oh my god. <laughs> um, what did I say when I first walked down the hall? Like, my memory's not... You felt like your weight bearing was balanced. Yes. I, I, felt, I felt like I was actually... Oh, and um, it didn't feel... I, 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 it was smooth. The weight transfer was smooth. I didn't feel like I was... Boom, dropping weight on this side, then dropping weight on this side. I felt like I was skating more than plotting. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. And did you also report that when you would do like a deadlift that your body would like twist a little bit? No. No, I you didn't. I haven't deadlifted for years because I can't. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm confusing you with somebody else. But you had some movement, did you not, where your pelvis kind of twisted or your trunk twisted or am I wrong? Uh, I, I asked you if baseball swinging could be part of the rotational issue. what what brought the pattern on possibly mm -hmm. yeah okay because that's only I mean as a right-handed you only bat from one side so you true. only do that one rotation true true right yeah yeah but I couldn't I haven't played baseball since 2009 so yeah all righty <laughs> so let's just sum it up and I will teach you a self-treatment for everything that we did with you so you won't have to come back and see me I don't think these patterns are going to come back, but I, we're going to make sure they don't come back. Okay. okay. So I'll teach you real specific ways to self-mobilize those areas. And you'll be able to tell by trying to mobilize them. Mm -hmm. If it feels therapeutic, then you'll proceed and self-treat. If it just feels like you're laying on a, on a hard, on a foam dowel and it's not doing anything, then you don't need to do it. Okay. So we'll teach you that for your ribs and for your sacrum. And for your hip, uh, the ankles, by just stretching your heels cords, you'll be fine. The gain in the ankle motion is restored every time you walk. So it doesn't need to be repeated. Okay. If you wore boots for 40 hours a week, then I would have, you know, I would be sure to have somebody mobilize those for you. But that's not the case. All right. So can you sum it up for us and tell us about <clears throat> your experience coming here? Uh, what do you think the future holds? Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> uh, in in summary, everything's been what I've been searching for. I've been I've been playing this self diagnosis online game for six years. It got really. Why? I mean, why are you doing the self diagnosis? Um, well, I I've got nothing bad to say about the Navy, but when I was in the PT didn't help me, and that's when it started to get bad. And I was like, it, you know. I, I'm the only one who can help me. Um, I, I, I don't know. The words don't make sense. Uh, but you're trying to help yourself. Trying to help myself, like, and that's natural to me. Um, and I, I found so many different things that gave me relief for a very short time. Oh, sure. I took a ball and would roll it on my piriformis okay. and thought okay. I had... Okay, all right. Yeah. So uh, basically, the, the experience here has been I got answers. <laughs> I talked to someone <laughs> who knew what the hell they were talking about and could notice something and say, oh, this needs to be unlocked, this needs to be changed, and we'll, we're, we're down to millimeters of, you know, glide and angle and stepping and posture and sitting and inches on the chair. Like, it's what I've been looking for. I'm glad you have a YouTube channel because that's where I was doing a lot of my looking. <laughs> yeah, and it re reinforces, I think, the value of doing a whole body assessment on a person. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about posture, I'm talking about a whole body assessment, not of gross movement, but of these small micro movements of the sacrum or motion through the sacrum, um, uh, mobility through the ribs, through mm -hmm. the ankles, etc. You know, I think by, by putting all the pieces together, but looking at ergonomics, you know, how do you fit in that chair? Um, and I'm just surprised that was missed and, and looking at your hip joint because really we're supposed to look at the joint above and the joint below, right? Mm -hmm. And you had them evaluate the pelvic joints. So the next joint below that would have been the hip joints. Mm. So it's interesting. Um, I'm very optimistic for you. You've been a very complex case. I mean, I, I almost missed that, that thing that we call torsion of the sacrum. Mm. Um, we can debate about it later on, but 
apparently treating it had benefit for you. Yes. Now we can debate the mechanics, you know, later on, but uh, for you treating that was, was very meaningful. That was, that was the, that was the crown jewel. Nice. Nice. And I thought so. Mm -hmm. I thought so too. So I'm going to also teach you some very safe, gentle movement. And I think sometimes our bodies need gentle, safe movement. And, you know, there's this overemphasis on quickly go to the core, work on the core. Well, when you, you know, when you went for all that core strengthening, you were incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Tell us, elaborate. I, it made no sense to have a six pack and have my physical therapist You're say. You're talking about an abdominal six pack or yeah, like? An abdominal six pack, like yeah. a, a visible, take right. your shirt off, that guy's ripped. Kind right. Of six so pack. how, yeah. And then to find, uh, you know, a, a PT who just says, okay, so what we're going to start with before we do anything is we're going to do some core strengthening exercises for the first three weeks. Okay. And you're like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding? So, yeah, that's just so counterintuitive. I'm more for test it. And if there's if you identify a real weakness, then go for it. But, you know, on a person who's quite fit, I don't think that's the best. That might not be the best in coming. Well, history yeah. has shown us with you. The history has shown you that that really wasn't what you needed. Yes, for me, that was true. Yeah. So I'm very optimistic. You know, I look forward to getting long-term feedback from you. Mm. Uh, if you have any questions, you need to contact me. And, you know, emails can drag a couple of days behind. But uh, if I miss, if I fail to reply, send me another. Or better than that, just call me. Okay. So I'm pretty free most early mornings Mountain Time. And I'm usually free after 3 o'clock in the day. I, I work a light schedule. Great. Weekends are great. You. You'll reach me on weekends too. Okay. All right. I, uh, so I'm looking forward any, to any final thoughts. Um, I thought of something a minute ago, but I forgot what it is. Um, but this has just been phenomenal. Uh, yeah, that's the way. Uh, I always knew. I always felt like I was fixable, but that there was a complicated combination. I was. Nice. I was a lock that wasn't just a key. You had to twist me to the left, twist me to the right, you know, three times this way. And when the combination was figured out, I knew I'd be fixable. I felt that. I didn't feel like I had a disease right. or something. Right, right, right. But but no right. one could fix me. So that's my final thought was I felt fixable, but I couldn't find someone to fix me. So How long have you been disabled? Uh, I, the last two years, drastically. That's pretty challenging economically. Yeah. Absolutely. You You had a story. You bought a Corvette. <laughs> you bought a dream car. I bought my dream car, and then I couldn't keep it because I lost the job that allowed me to afford it because I couldn't sit. I, I worked for two weeks in training. Are you getting therapy now for your car? <laughs> <laughs> I should. Um, I, I, I walked across the parking lot on like my second week of this new job, and I was standing in line at Wendy's, and I was trembling standing there. I, could not, I couldn't wait the three people that were ordering in front of me. I had to go sit down before I then wait my turn, you know? Incredible. Um, and that's when I left my job this time last year. Yeah. And I've been self looking for answers, continuing since then. Um, the year before that, COVID, everyone was at home. It was really hard to get seen for lower back pain in March of 2020. Like just, just VA stuff. Right, just right. Everyone's focus is all COVID. So it was really hard to just like see people and get sure answers and do sure stuff. yeah sure so what do you see the future what do you think the future holds oh i think i'm gonna i think i'm, I'm gonna get used to being right <laughs> and and the sky's the limit from here i think feels like it i'm very optimistic yeah you know and you may have a setback here and there but you'll have the tools to come out of it right you know, so based on on my assessment based on what i've seen over the last three days i share that enthusiasm Thank you.